This video is going to be focused on the CH mod tool, which is used to change access permission, basic access permissions to files and directory on Linux and Unix systems. Um, you are going to realize that the most important part actually of this video is not so much the CH mod tool, which is very easy to learn to use, but it's more the way the syntax that it uses to represent permissions on files and folder. So let's get started by looking at what those permission um, will look like. So we have here a little folder um, with a bunch of subfolders and a file. And if I do a ls-l, so long option, I'm going to get a lot of additional information, including what is of interest to us in this video, those lines here, the segments of line, that have uh, a bunch of one letter keyword repeated over and over. Uh, so we have a first letter here, and you can probably intuitively guess that when it's a D, uh, like here, it means that we're talking about a folder, in this case, CDA3103. And when there is a dash, which means nothing, then we're talking about a regular file. Okay, there's more to this first uh, value here, but the bottom line is that this string, this entire string here, with dashes or special letters, you know, in each position, is what define not only what the file uh, tells us, sorry, what the file is, but also define its access permissions. So how is this organized? Well, the first letter we already mentioned um, its meaning in this, this simple context, okay? We just have one regular file and a bunch of regular folders, no things like, nothing like symbolic link or special files, etc. So D means folder, directory, and dash at the, the start of the string mean uh, regular file. And then we have nine characters that come after that. Those nine character characters, they are grouped by packets of three. The first three characters correspond to the permission for actually the owner of the file. Okay, so here we have with the ls-l, we get also this information. We see that this folder belongs to user tux and belongs to group tux, okay? So the first three letters, characters, correspond to the access right that the owner of the file has on this file folder, okay? The next three letters correspond to the permission rights that anybody, any user in the group to which this file uh, belong can, uh, can do, okay? And then the third one, the third group, is for any other user on the system. So, the first is user, then group permission, then anyone else permission, okay? So when I say user here, I need I mean really owner, but it's uh, it's referred to as as you here. So we're going to see that more in a in a list, in, a, in a few minutes. So we have those three things here. So let's take a blank piece of uh, virtual paper here and let's uh, let's summarize this be because we are going to to add some notation to this so we've seen so far that we have uh, let's make this a little bigger here and go that should go so we have a, a d or a nothing to start the, the string okay so we are going to leave that one alone Okay, we're going to focus on the access permission. So you saw in the previous example that we had those triplets of letters R W X was uh, repeated, qu repeated quite often. And so if I go to the second group, I add also R, W, X. And then the third group in my example, I add R, nothing, and X. So what is the meaning of those letters? Well, they follow obviously the same template, okay? The first character of, that, of those triplets is always either R or minus, dash, hyphens. Uh, um, however you want to, to call it, okay? <laughs> doesn't matter. But when it is R, that means that within that group, we granted read permission. So uh, R here means that, and this is the owner slash user, okay? So owner slash user is the first group. 
Then we have the second triplet that is for the group permission, and the last one for others, over users that are not the owner or in the group that this file belong to. Okay, so when we have the R as first letter of the triplet, that means that the owner of the file has a read permission. And obviously, W always in second position, so it could be W here or dash. If we have a W, that means the owner again has write access, the capability to write and modify the file. Okay. If we have a dash, that means the owner cannot write the file. And then X. X is a little special. X means by default execute. So if you have X here in the third character for, for example, the triplet corresponding to the owner, that means that the owner of the file can execute that file. So it could be a script, could be an ex a binary, okay, that has been compiled and executable. If you want to be able to run those things, they need to have the X flag. Otherwise, if you have a minus here, uh, well, that means you cannot execute them. So it could be a script that you don't want uh, to be able to run because it's not ready yet or whatnot, or more likely, most likely, it is simply a, a regular text file, a PDF file, or something like that, some form of document that for which it doesn't make sense to execute it. Okay, so this is an execute bit, so X for execute, I guess. Um, this is an execute bit of the triplet here. Okay, and of course, this is true for everybody. All right, so that means that what we said here about RWX meaning for the owner, uh, we have the same thing here for the group. So if your file belongs to, to a group, let's say Tux, well, every user that is in the same group Tux, okay, is going to be able in this example to read, write and execute the file. And if I replace some of those character by a minus, then I remove that permission, okay? And then overs is for anybody else on the system, any other user that is not the owner of the file and that doesn't belong to the group that this file belongs to. All right. So it's relatively simple. So I talked about file a lot and most of what I said is true for files and folder, except the bit, no pun intended, about uh, the last character, the X. Okay, so in the case of a folder, the X is still stands for execute. We still use the letter X, okay, but it has a slightly different meaning. To execute a folder is interpreted as to be able to CD, to change directory inside of it. So for you to be able to enter a folder, you need, so if you are the owner of the folder, you need to have an X here. If you are within the same group, then uh, the group the folder belongs to, there needs to be an X here. Uh, and last but not least, if you are not in the group and you are not the owner and you want to be able to enter the folder, well, you need an X here, okay? So let's play a little with this. Let's just like illustrate real quick what I mean by this. So we know, we know of a way to represent, to read actually the uh, the permission that are associated with a file. Okay, so you see, for example, here that the user can do everything on that folder. Okay, so read, write, uh, write in that can, case includes also deleting. Okay, same thing for files. So I can read the folder information uh, with ls, I can uh, delete it, I can modify it, rename it, and stuff like that, and I can enter it. Same thing for the group, anybody in the group talks. Okay. And then any other person on the system can only read and enter the folder, but cannot, you know, modify it, write it, delete it. So now we need a syntax to allow us, we need both a syntax and a tool to allow us to modify those permissions. So the tool that we're going to use is chmod. So you can start your journey uh, of learning about chmod by chmod dash dash help, okay? It's going to tell you about the, the main option that are available. So pretty much you call chmod, you're going to use some of the option if you want to, these are optional. Then you are going to specify a mod, okay? And there are two different syntaxes to specify the mod, which means the permission of the file, okay? A syntax where we specify with a symbolic notation, the mode and optionally multiple mode. And I'm going to illustrate exactly what that means. And then at the end, we specify one or more file or folder names. These are the file or folders to which the mode that we specified here is going to be applied. And then the second syntax that is a little more uh, shorthand 
uh, that is numerical instead of being symbolic um, only allows you to specify one mode, one set of permission that is expressed as a single three-digit octal integer, okay, so an integer in base 8, and this applies again to all the files and folder names that you specify here, okay, so two different notations to play with ch mode. so we're going to cover both of them. So again, let's go back to our directory here, and we're going to try to modify uh, the mod for, for example, the permission for one of our folder. So we are going to take COP4930 as uh, 31 as a folder we want to modify. So the name of the file or folder uh, of which you want to modify the permission comes last. Okay, and then here what we have is well the choice between the two syntax. We're not going to use uh, option for now. Options are really easy to to learn. Uh, if you take a look at the dash dash help page or the main page for chmod, you're going to see that there are very few options and they are very uh, self-explanatory. So we're going to focus on the permission syntax here. So what I want to do here is I want to tell chmod that the new mode for um, for COP4931 for that folder is going to be as follow. So you stands for owner. I know it's not natural, but that's why I introduced the, the term owner slash user, you know, for the first group of three letter. So let's say that I want to say that instead of RWX for the for the user, I want so simply RX. Okay? So this is how I write it. Okay, I'm going to write that I want to change uh, the permission using the, uh, the symbolic notation. But instead of having to specify the dash, okay, which really just means, you know, I don't want to grant the W permission, I just concatenate, I just compact the notation and I just list here the characters that correspond to the permission I want to set. So for the owner of the file, the user of the file, you, I set R and X. Okay, if I wanted only RW, well, there we go, RWX, I would just write RWX, okay? And then you saw in the syntax that we, uh, the syntax summary that we got with the dash dash help um, uh, option, you saw that we could specify multiple modes. So let's start with this, okay? I just do one mode, I change only the user, and then I go ls dash l, and you can see that, yes, indeed, it has been modified. So if I wanted to modify, for example, um, the group permission, I would use the letter G. So group permission equal, let's say Rx again. So I'm going to do a ls dash L. So now I change to Rx the user permission, then the group permission. And let's say that I want everybody else for whatever reason, that doesn't really make sense, but I want everybody else on the system to have the right permission that I just removed from the user and the group. So I would write it like this. O stands for overs. So don't get tricked, okay? O is not owner, O is overs, and U is actually the owner of the file. So CH mode O equal RWX, and then if I do LS dash L, you can see that everybody can read, write, execute that folder. Okay? So all right, so that's interesting. But we, we use three commands to do each of the to change each of the group. And we could have done that in one uh, one command only. So we could say, for example, user is getting RWX, group is getting read and uh, execute, can go inside the folder but cannot delete it or change it. Um, and then the overs get Rx as well. So by separating my uh, symbolic notation here, my assignment of permission for user, group, and overs, uh, I can specify all three uh, in one shot. So I can do this, and then if we do a ls-l, you can see that I reverted back pretty much to almost my original permission. I have rwx for the user, rx for the group, and rx for overs. Okay? So just to to um, to show real quick what the impact can be of those uh, those things, if I remove x here for user, and I remove x for group, and I remove x for overs, there we go. So I really made made it so that that folder uh, does not have the x permissions execute for permission for anybody on the system. Okay, 
And when I try to get into that folder, you see that it's giving me permission denied. Okay, so that's just to confirm that all of those manipulations that we learned to do actually, well, they do something. Okay, so I'm going to restore some more uh, viable permissions. Okay, all right, and now you can see that if I try to go inside that folder, of course, I'm allowed to do so. So that's that's it for the symbolic notation. Uh, that's the part that we are going to. To, uh, I guess this is the part that's the most natural to use, so that's probably the one that you are going to use a lot, okay? Now, sometimes you want to make sure that, for instance, uh, let's go back a little bit, let's mess up our folder again, okay? So I make those weird permissions where nobody can actually enter the folder. There we go. And let's say that I want to just add the X permission to, for example, um, well, for example, to the group uh, to start off with and then the user and then both at the same time, okay, or in any order. So I don't care about what the current permission are. So I don't want to set a new triplet of, of characters for the permission for, let's say, the user. All I want to do is to add a permission, okay? And if it's already there, that's fine, uh, but I want to make sure that it's there if it's not already there. So there is another syntax, another, um, to say symbolic syntax that I can use. So instead of using equal, that means I change a whole set of, uh, of uh, permission for the user, for example, I can say I want to add x execute to the user. So let's run that, then let's do a ls, and you can see that the x flag has been added in the first triplet that correspond to the owner slash user. Okay, so similarly, I could say, well, I want to add x to the group. And again, if I do a ls-l, you see that it just added that permission. So I can use also the multiple uh, mode syntax. So as you can say, for example, um, well, let's go back to, to a state where we have those weird permission. Let's do a ls. And now I, what I want to do is I want to, and I'm going to retype it, ch mode u plus x, comma, g, so no space here, okay, g plus x. Okay, so I want to do two things. I want to use the I want to add the X permission to both the user triplet, the owner triplet, and the the group triplet. And then I need to specify C B forty nine thirty one here. All right. If I do ls shell, that did exactly the same thing that I previously did, but in one uh, in one uh, in one shot, pretty much. So we have two different um, levels of of notation here for the symbolic syntax, okay, let's add a third one. And you probably guessed already what it's going to be. Um, so let me again reset my little demo here. And okay, so now I want to, uh, actually that was a bad move, I should have kept, should have kept my X flag because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove it, okay? So I have the X flag here for user and group. So now I want a syntax where I can say I want to remove the X flag from the user or the group or why not both. So let's do both directly because now you understand that I can do multiple things just by separating them by comma, okay? So the notation is minus. So plus adds a permission, minus remove that permission. And if I do ls-l, you can see that yes, indeed, it has removed the permission. So I can set one of those triplets, okay? Uh, I can set them, each of them to, a, to an arbitrary value. Or I can say add this letter to the triplet if it's not there, or remove this letter from the triplet if it's already there. Okay? So these are the three things that you can do with the symbolic notation of CH mode.